No Game No Life, a series I just absolutely adore for its humour, fun characters and of course its absolutely gorgeous aesthetic. Ah, this is as much as I can fit on my shelves at the moment and it's also my most backlogged of unboxings unfortunately so I thought I will I can't change it today but might as well start and I thought I'd unbox these two gorgeous girls today since they just came out recently for anyone new or returning hello my dears I am Olive Blade and welcome back to my wonderland <laughs> Looking at the date of the release of these figures, I said it was recent, but <laughs> recently being June. Yes, I know. Aunt Ma I'm just terrible with this backlog, but we'll get there eventually. Ugh, I've been dying to unbox these girls. So this is the No Game No Life Zero Shui and Shiro Pop Up Parade concert version, large by Good Smile Company got a big title there and I just absolutely love this aesthetic I the violin has been a big part of my life growing up and playing it so and also being part of orchestras so any character especially ones that I love that get anything to do with the orchestra or instruments I just am ready to pounce on so of course these caught my eye not to mention the absolute beautiful garments they have designed for these two and it is also quite attractive the large scale of these as well as you can see the boxes are different shapes and I think that might be to cater towards their hair size which if you don't know anything I am an absolute sucker for gorgeous hair I just if the figure has that it's just mm, so hard for me to say no Maybe some of you other collectors can relate. There's certain aspects or details of figures, regardless if you know the character or not, that just speak to your soul and makes you want to buy it or just have it because of that gorgeous detail. <laughs> Talking of the boxes though, they are gorgeous. And usually I would unbox Shiro because she's my favorite, but let's start with Shui, shall we? Let's crack her out of this plastic prison. But yes, I find the box design for Pop-Up Parade Large to be much better than the smaller ones. They're just uh, no aesthetic at all, whereas these, especially with the colour scheme, are probably helping out a bit. Inside, of course, is quite boring cardboard. And then here we are, she's in her plastic blister here. And already the colours I'm just drooling from the absolute gorgeousness of this colour palette. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so they're protected very well and it looks like they're actually quite a good size. I wasn't sure because they are, again, short characters and yeah, they did tend to be a bit smaller. So I was keen to see what size they were going to actually make these and oh, just keen to take her out. I believe both of them have different colour bases and you've got the, the typical base here which I guess you can't complain because this is meant to be more cost effective I think these ended up being maybe $80 a little bit less each and a little bit upscale and oh look at the scratch bases I'm pretty sure that must be a manufacturing quality issue and then of course we've got the credentials on the back bring her out though oh so pretty <laughs> I just love the outfits for these two and since that they haven't really done strayed too far from the original outfits which I'm not complaining because I'm always a bit generous, but it is so lovely to see them put a lot of detail into some different outfits for once which I'm super keen on. Oh look at the little fluffy shoe boot things too. Lots of plastic covering to protect, which is, I'm glad because that paint work on the hair is just, oh, it looks so vibrant and beautiful. And so here she is, vibrant colors already stealing my soul away. <laughs> wow. And I want to say it's quite, these are quite, well, this is a quite a hefty figure, which is pretty awesome. 
and I want to say that they feel one seventh, but it's because they have such interesting body proportions like their large head and that a lot of their figures are really hard to compare scale wise but I'd like to say that it is in between a 1 8th and 1 7th so it's definitely a very nice size you could add to your collection at not too much of the cost it's still still $80 but let's have a look at the quality shall we so far I am loving the colors I would have liked a bit more shading on this. I think they were relying on this sculpt. The sculpt is very awesome and clean. There's not too many. There's in on the shoey here. The seams are hidden quite well, and I love the texture like on her her top bit as well. And you got her cool robot little tendrils coming out of her back then. And yes, I know I'm just admiring the bottom of the skirt here, and she does have her robot leg attachments at the top there which I think is pretty pretty cool I, I just ah, I love the cool robotic parts and stuff on Shui so it's nice that they did add those details even though like, you're not gonna really see them but still and I love how they've just done like a slant on the dress it's just so simple stylistic but I just I just love it it suits the character so well the pose is so shooey as well and her head's just a little bit up she's always got this uplifted hopeful kind of light feel about her and they've really captured that here the paper though i would have liked a bit more definition between the pages and i would have liked some like a music decal on the pages instead of them just being boring and blank anyway let's crack open shiro and compare oh. <laughs> Oh yes, that's right. I, I was right. The hair in the back there definitely takes up a lot more space. And even though I thought these large boxes are ridiculous, I I do get why they've done them. Let's crack her open this plastic prison and oh. <laughs> so she's got the white base, which I guess does complement her lighter hair feel. Even though I wasn't sure how I felt about it being different color, even though these are technically you can get them separately, but they feel like a set. Would be nice to have some sort of interesting stage base, but don't I guess it's not in their budget yet. And here you have the same scrapes by the manufacturer machine, whatever whatever that's doing that. It's very annoying because it is very obvious. Ooh, and she is quite weighty herself. So like the show you one, she doesn't have as much shading. I think what kind of it kind of gets away with it for me though because the colors are so vibrant and it is kind of unique in a way and I can't it's with its stylistic and oh here she is she is so beautiful even with the hair being with not too many loose strands they give just enough to give an, an awesome sculptural shape and compliment look at that paintwork and I love the, the little bit on the skirt, the edging on the skirt is gorgeous. The tight colour, it still could use a bit more shading in my opinion, but because the entire figure doesn't have that much shading on it, it kind of blends in well considering how colourful it is. I know, shocking. That being said, I love the pearlescent finish that they've used on both dresses because sometimes the pearlescent finish like this can look a little cheap. Oh, look her adorable shoes there. She's just so cute. <laughs> but this paint pearlescent looks really good quality. And I don't know what to say for that. It just uh, it just ha does look really lovely. The baton is a little uh, made out of softer plastic. And I'd say they're probably the worst part in this figure. I know. I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. The, the hat is the quality control on her little hat there. And you'll see some closer pictures. You can see quite it's a small piece but it has some clear seams in it and the paintwork on the rose isn't the cleanest which is a bit sad and unlike Shui's hair that is perfect there is some noticeable seams in Shiro's on the this will be the right hand side but I think they're towards the back so I think hopefully can ignore them it's tricky when trying to rate the quality because these are made to me a bit more cost effective but still lean towards scale 
That being said, I think there are a gorgeous set of unique characters and I'm not just saying that, it's so beautiful. I, I don't think I can really compare this to anything else in my collection and the colours. My only criticism, a little bit more shading, but apart from that, look how beautiful they are and you have to get the set, look at them. But the, yeah, the hair, the face expressions, even Shiro, she's, her posture is very Shiro. Oh, look at Shui again. Just the hair gradients are just divine. And the, I love, she's definitely the one being like an assistant kind, I think, to Shiro, who has the conductor's button, so I can definitely see that. But the hair is stunning, and I, it's to the enough of the sides that I can still enjoy it from looking at the front. And it just the, the attire designs, like, the, the clothing is so beautiful and see the fine curls on Shiro's hair here with the gradient color I'm just eating that up it's so visually beautiful <laughs> I don't know what more to say ah oh, I'm so glad I opened up these two they're just the pop of color I really needed and even with my little criticisms I think pop up parade have done a gorgeous job so let's check out a showcase shall we Figure comparison time! <laughs> of course I had to bring out some pop-up parades and the original Fat Shiro! Oh, here they are! I just... <laughs> They're Ninja Road as well. I can't get over how beautiful these girls are and how much I love their design and their scale! Of course the Kodopuki arm Shui there and her pop-up parade! <laughs> Not to mention, Shui looks so beautiful in an elegant dress, which is, you know, it's a little bit contradictory to her badass battle robot parts, but I love how they've blended it in. On the showcase, you would have seen, I got a close-up of her top, and you've got, like, the kind of textured lace, and you can see her arm connections there. I just love those details, and it works so well, and I really love... Just how they've done just the poses, the proportions, the sculpt, the colour is gorgeous. If they just had was able to add a little bit more shading to like the dresses, for example, I just think it would have been mm, just absolutely perfect. But they're definitely on the right path of my opinion. And these just popped out of nowhere, so they're very welcome for the beautiful orchestral concert feel. Oh, I love it. Even though there is a little part of me that would have loved them to have instruments 
and maybe that would have pushed up the cost a little bit but like if they're going for that kind of cost effective feel is still like one of my favorite price figures I have I never played the game but because I you know I play the violin love the violin is this one and even with it being an uh, old prize figure the details of the violin is enough so if they did something similar I th I think that would have been awesome but maybe a bit too difficult for this medium quality they're going for but yeah, good smile. You've done so well here. I love these girls so much. I'm so happy to add them to the collection. They're just absolutely divine. What more can I say? If you love these two characters and you're a musical enthusiast such as myself, or even just a colour enthusiast, I could not recommend these more to your collection. I hope you enjoyed the same adorable brightness that I got out of this unboxing. Thank you so much for joining me for today and if you enjoyed it as much as I did please be sure to like, comment and subscribe and until next week take care, treat yourself and I'll see you then. Bye!